It's official. The rumors were in fact true of an industry plant of being called upon once again to save you motherfuckers. What's up people? It's been a minute since I've made one of these. The last time I did, you could say shit the crazy. Well, Dewey calls, I'm back. The ugly truth behind bodybuilding. I feel like I've earned my stripes in the sport. I've been fully immersed in the sport for almost two years now, and I'm talking fully immersed. If you know what I'm saying. Okay, with just how popular stepping on stage is becoming now, every TikToker, every YouTuber, every male above the age of 16, every young lad I met in the gym when I was in Houston, we're all getting ready for a show. This shit's becoming dangerously popular. So in this video, I wanna touch on five things that I feel like everybody should know before you decide to step on stage and become a bodybuilder. Let's get into number one. Extreme dieting and its effects. This will fall back on the last The Ugly Truth video I done. However, the last prep that I just had, I went to extreme levels to get in the condition I needed to get into to step on stage and I ended up winning. My calories got as low as 1350 calories. The effects of being on such a low calorie diet will be fatigue, tired, your motivation will be low, it will take a hit on hormones, you'll be, you'll have serious mood swings, you'll be hungry, your sleep takes a hit, a huge hit. There were some nights on prep where I'd go to bed at 11 p.m. and wake up at 3 a.m. and there was no way in hell I was falling back asleep. The body was just too fatigued. It's in a, it's in survival mode. It, it, physically will not let you switch off in case that shit does not switch back on. Your training's gonna take a hit. The gym becomes a chore. It doesn't become enjoyable. Your food focus is gonna spike. All day you're, you're waiting on your next meal. You're looking at your watch or your phone, counting down the hours, minutes, seconds until you can eat another piece of broccoli. Extreme dieting takes effect on your entire existence. It consumes you. You're fighting a battle every single day with your brain saying, I wanna stay alive and then your actions saying, nah, G, we'll take it from here. And it's definitely something that you will never truly understand unless you endure a bodybuilding prep. But when you need to get to the level you need to get to to step on stage, you're gonna experience a lot of negative side effects. Number two, the mental slash emotional toll that comes along with a bodybuilding prep. Now this I truly experienced in my last prep. I pushed my body and my mind to what I thought would be unachievable heights. And I definitely experienced extreme mental slash emotional toll. For example, body dysmorphia, you look phenomenal. If you look at the physique shot you're looking at, once you're finished the prep, you put a bit of body fat on, you will see an amazing shredded full physique. But in that moment, you might feel skinny. You might feel flat. You're telling yourself you don't have it. Do I do I keep pushing with this prep? Am I worth it? Can I stand a chance on stage? All this stuff just plays on your mind all day. You're gonna be snappy. Some days you're gonna wake up and it's just not it. You'll have mood swings. You'll be very irritated all day. However, every single day is emotional slash mental warfare during the end of prep. That's the only thing that is hard to overcome. The diet becomes almost numb. The training becomes almost numb, but every day you're battling with your mind and some days it is it's uncontrollable but you have to sit back take a breather remind yourself that this is all going to pass sometimes your brain is your worst enemy and you have to accept that you have to see the vision and keep going number three man. glenn are you okay glenn I just don't think anyone's taking me serious, Em. Or what I'm wearing serious. You're not seeing me riding off into war horseback in 1963. Show some goddamn respect. Or in another color, AKA green. Oh, you need a tea? I got you. The grandpa tea. The red velvet cupcake cream silk tea. Or the black tea with the cherubs. Oh, you need jeans, denim jeans in all shapes and sizes. You need something a little more slick. Got you with the slacks, bro. Oh, your parents are rich. Got you with the Cheetos. Legend London, Glenn Gillen certified. There will be a link in the description. Let me get back to dropping knowledge bombs. Make sure you use the code Glenn, man. Number three, the physical health risks. Now, physical health and bodybuilding don't see eye to eye, especially because the sport of bodybuilding, temptations will be there to do things that may not have been there before you have ever stepped on stage, before you immerse yourself into this sport and what actually truly goes on behind the sport of bodybuilding. It is everything but health and fitness. There's health risks to extreme dieting. There's health risks when you go assisted. There is health risks to being at the level of lean you need to be to step on stage and present what is needed to be presented in order to ever win a show against people who, again, have pushed their body to the limit that is beyond healthy also. So you're stepping up on a stage with athletes who have entered an unhealthy level of condition 
position to try and beat you and if you want to beat them you need to push it so there's like a range your prep will be let's say 16 weeks long you'll have your first 10 weeks from then it feels like you're pushing it the last six weeks you're really chipping away at body fat you didn't even know was there and that's when all the side effects of a prep really kick in when you dig into those levels of condition your hormones can go out of whack bodily function will take a hit against sleep and sleep is the number one thing your body needs to survive that takes a hit your recovery will take a hit your mental is taking a hit everything slows down your body really does what it needs to do to stay alive during this period there's a reason the sport of bodybuilding is a short period you don't dive down to those levels and stay there you got to get in get the look get on stage get the silverware and get your ass up out of there man number four this is something that i have a personal experience with and it's post show rebounding slash eating disorders look lads when you're pushing your body to levels that are needed to be pushed in order to achieve those physiques you may have a wacky relationship with food near the end of a prep you're counting down the hours minutes seconds until your next meal and this gets installed in your brain this shit thinks this is what's needed in order to survive okay all this builds up to one day where you step on a stage after doing weeks of absolute starvation complete food focus watching a clock tick down till you can eat again you've arrived at the day you step on the stage you do the show you step off the stage you're gonna get hit with a what now and sometimes that what now can can really f you up i've always said it since my first prep the hardest part of prep is after the show it's so easy to jump off that stage dive into your favorite food go out get a cheat meal eat all these cookies you're gonna wake up the next day and guess what you're gonna be hungry again because why you're at that level of lean where your body says where all your brain wants you to do is eat we need body fat we need to function and if you haven't got to control it can get messy and if you allow it to get messy it's going to compound it will eventually turn into an eating disorder uh, it's very common in the sport of bodybuilding it is it, it's so weird to me that this sport is supposed to be evolving around health and fitness and once you truly are immersed in the sport you see what goes on behind this shit and it's a nasty game. An eating disorder is no joke. It took me almost six months for me to fix my eating disorder after my first show. This last show, absolutely none. The show before that, absolutely none. I feel like your first show is, is, is going to be the one. If it's going to happen, it's going to be then. You won't be used to the discipline that is needed after a show. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to binge. It's going to repeat. You're going to binge. You're going to starve yourself. You're going to binge again. You're going to panic. Food focus will spike. Cravings will spike. It can get messy. Number five, I left this until last just because I wanted to give you more than enough reason to definitely consider everything before hopping on stage. Before I hit you with this, it's going to be a lonely road. Relationships and social isolation. It's going to be a lonely road. Now, the start of a prep is chill. You're still, you have high body fat. You're loving training. You're loving seeing the changes. You're getting abs. The, the shreds are coming in. But there will be a point where you, where it turns into a very selfish game. I don't understand why, but it's it comes to the point that if you don't stick to your own routine you will break and you can't let anyone slash team get in the way of that you have your entire days planned out and the reason they're planned out how they are is because you need to get from here to here every single day here being wake up here being go to sleep if you complete that you've made it to the next day you can't go to social events you'll be tempted by food maybe drinks you'll be hungry you won't be able to truly enjoy a conversation with someone without thinking when is my next meal? And it comes to the point where you accept it and just become an absolute loner because you can't break. Your relationships could take a hit because of how much of a sensitive person you are. You could get irritated, snappy. There will be a period where you'll be a bit of a dick. But again, you need to sit back and you need to remember that this is self-inflicted. It was you who chose to do this prep. Try to remind yourself that to the best of your ability every time you see yourself slip. And, and realize, man, if you want to do this shit long term, you're going to need the people who love you around you. It, it may seem like a solo sport, but trust me, if you have a team of people supporting you around you, you can make this shit a whole lot more enjoyable. Like I said, at the end of the video, I wanted to touch on why I feel like once it's all said and done, it's usually worth it. Becoming someone and just building habits that I didn't like, I wasn't proud of, and it takes an extreme period like a prep to really kick me back into gear. I'm building character and becoming someone I want to become. I guess that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap the video up here. Appreciate you all watching. Do you have what it takes, motherfucker? Who knows when I'll make another one of these videos when I feel the need to. Over and out.